Hey guys, Julian here with another Netflix anime review. Never get tired of saying that. And this one I've actually been particularly waiting a long time with great anticipation for. Let's finally take a look at Pacific Rim The Black Season 2. Alright, spoiler warning is in effect because this is the end of the series. So we will be discussing everything that we can about it. So first up, yes, the series is over as confirmed by Netflix. So we're going to have to dive into literally everything, which really isn't much. There's only 14 episodes. Yeah, the last part basically served as it served its purpose, wrapping up the series. And that was it. We didn't get much into the character development at all, sadly. The episodes as well felt much shorter. Less was accomplished in terms of plot developments. Characters got less impactful resolutions. For instance, the buildup of Haley and Taylor reuniting with their parents felt lackluster, actually. And also, like how Shane, by chance, finds their mother out of all the sisters he could have pulled, he somehow finds the correct one. And actually, let's also state the point that he doesn't kill her outright like he did with the other ones. He didn't even unmask the other ones. Alright? So he just got lucky by some string of fate that he picked the right one. But not only that fact, he knows before setting out to find Mei that he won't be coming back? Like, how is that even possible? What, was he then expecting that May would end up killing him? I mean, he was so hellbent on getting the Jaeger that he just kind of gives it up. He wants to be a father all of a sudden. No offense, that kind of level of character development doesn't happen overnight. Even in real life terms. So it was just some kind of plot magic to kind of tie up that loose end, so it felt like. As well, how does Shane just all of a sudden, suddenly ha just have her old memories? Like, why did he back up May's memories on a flash stick? Like, May had fretted over the fact that she had false implanted memories in her mind. That was a big plot point in season one as to why she left him and she doesn't trust him. But it's as if she just kind of receives them as a handout served up on a silver platter, to, as a matter of fact. Then what was the point of doing all of this? And May worrying about her life being a lie, like, what is she gonna do? I mean, I'm even curious, like, we didn't even get to see in the series that, did she even use the stick? Like, she ends up making it to Sydney base. And to my knowledge, I didn't see her use it once. I thought that would be a plot point of some sort, like, oh, she's going to use it during a drift. No. So, I actually don't know if she decides to receive her memories back. I don't even know if it's a conundrum where if she receives her old memories, her, her new ones get overwritten. Like, there was nothing talked about in that. But again, it's resolved enough that, oh, she has closure. So that's fine. That's, that's all we need. So let's put May aside. I'd also would have liked the mother to have a bigger part in the story. Like, okay, I have to admit, I love the fact that they did give her a nice send off. I mean, okay, great. They got to have her live out a false memory as her last as she passed away, which I think was really touching. But did they really need to kill her off? I mean, she seemed like a far better character than the father was. I mean, the father didn't even go back out. He just kind of left and got off to safety and was fine all of this time. He didn't come back for the kids. And we just kind of brush it off because, oh, at least they got reunited. Like, come on. She was far stronger and far more courageous. And again, 
because of the lack of character development, because of lack of time, we didn't get to see much going on. Actually, there was more turmoil between the characters than resolution, even. Now, I can't be the only one, but I noticed this now, but basically they've killed off almost every side character in this story. And I'm not even sure why. Like, they seem to have overdone it a bit. Maybe this was due to budget constraints that they didn't want to have too many characters on screen because it was too hard to model. But they killed off so many characters. Like they killed off the entire village, people that they met along their journey. Like aside from the main cast, almost no one seemingly survived. I mean, I don't even know if Shane's crew got out. They even killed off Apex. Man, that guy was freaking amazing. Okay, let's not even talk about Apex for a second. They got rid of the coolest, single most, I thought vital character of the series, Loa. But let's talk more about the idea of budget constraints because as well, the second season seemed to have a lot of reused footage in my opinion, and a lot of flashbacks. Why? So my overall feeling from this season is that it was plagued with production issues. I mean, it was a little over a year that it came out, and Dota even got its second season sooner than Pacific Rim. I think they had a lot of issues from the script to the animation, basically all parts of this story must have had some sort of issue. That's why it feels and came to an abrupt end. I mean, the series had so much potential. I mean, a lot of people enjoy the Pacific Rim franchise and I thought it could be a part of something so much bigger, but maybe it might have just been too costly or there might be some other factors at play here. Like, there isn't even a good reason as for why Mei decided to stick around for as long as she did. The fact that Boy also never speaks, like he doesn't even have a voice in his head, considering he is a hybrid kaiju and human. The only thing human about him is his boy-like body. Everything else just seems so kaiju. So. I was a little disappointed that he didn't have more depth to him. As to why he was even considered the messiah, I'm confused still. Like, what makes him so much more special? Maybe he is a special type of hybrid. I don't know. I don't think any of us are gonna know, sadly. I think my ultimate issue with this is that I felt it just had so much potential to be a multi-season anime that for this journey to come to an end like it did is kind of like a slap in the face. Another thing is going back to the Loa character. She seemed to be harboring so many more secrets that it was just kind of all chalked up to just her being an AI with emotions. And because of that, it got in the way and she just kind of felt guilty. Oh, come on. They downplayed that so much. How could they have not told an entire arc around that? Talking about what she, role she had to play, how her development came to be. I mean, an AI with emotions? That's kind of a big deal, even by today's standards. But it was just kind of left on the open like that. It was just kind of glossed over. But I'm even more sad the fact that they ended up killing Atlas Destroyer. Like, even the fact that Taylor solo drifted and got skills and memories from previous pilots that did that, they, he just ends up questioning his own abilities. I mean, he kind of seemed to have digressed from what cool person he was. I, I get it, everyone has their doubts. But they really tried to make him an unlikable character in the second half. And Haley being like 
Lola says the heart of the mission. I mean, I didn't really quite feel that in the beginning half, but I mean, she was the only one that kind of kept hope. And I don't want to say it rubbed off on everyone because it didn't feel like that. I mean, Taylor was really concerned with keeping everyone safe. I mean, damn, they became very cutthroat in the second half. While I am harping a lot on this second part, it is what it needed to be at the end of the day, and, it's, and that is closure for the series. And unfortunately, it does well enough to close out the story. But that ending? I mean, come on. The cast gathering around the mother's grave was just kind of sad. I mean, okay, yes, she passed away, so it should be sad. But I'm saying that it's sad in the sense of, I would have liked to have seen what became of them. Right? What did the kids grow up into? Did they become full-fledged pilots? Did they learn from this experience? Are they going on to bigger and brighter things? I don't know. What does this mean for the future of the franchise even? Are there going to be more stories in the Pacific Rim universe? Are there going to even be more animes? I don't even know. I, the way and how this season feels, I'm not overly optimistic. But what I can say is, it is definitely an action-packed series that looked so cool and I hope does come back in some sort of manner and we do get more entries in this franchise. Well guys, it's time for a romance corner and unfortunately I'm gonna have to cut it short because this season really focused on wrapping up the story rather than developing these character relationships and exploring some romantic options. I mean, the chemistry between May and Taylor became so sour during this season that I think that bridge got burned. Now, in the future, could there still be something between them? Maybe, but unfortunately, we have no evidence. So, I'm gonna cut this short. All right, guys, now is the three reasons why you should watch this anime. Number one is conclusion. This does bring the series to its end and kind of gives us a lot of the answers that we need. And I mean, as with every story, it needs a conclusion. And this, like I've said in the past so far in this video, it serves its purpose. Number two is, of course, the mech action. Of course, this being a mech anime, tons of more action sequences are available, and it looks amazing to see Atlas Destroyer kick some kaiju ass. And number three, it was said a bit in the first part, but I want to really iterate that it does give answers. Answers are a huge point to any story, and this does answer quite a bit of our questions. Unfortunately, though, there are still a ton of answers that we require, but I don't think we're going to get it. And I know what you guys are thinking. These sound like pretty weak points. And even weaker than usual than what I give for an anime. And I'm torn, honestly, because you guys should go out and see it. You guys need a conclusion to this story, as much as I did. But unfortunately, I think these reasons kind of reflect the effect of this season in general. It was a little weak. I feel really let down. When it first premiered, I was really hyped. It seemed so promising. I had high expectations of the story. And, like I've said, I'm right now unsure of what will happen to the Pacific Rim brand. Is this the end of animes for them? Will there be more stories in the universe? Do you want me to even explore a theory on this? Let me know down in the comments below. And I can give you my thoughts of where they can go from this and what the franchise can try to do. Well, that's all for this episode and series, I guess. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I actually talked a lot more about this than I thought, but I guess because it's over, I had a lot to say. So I hope to see you guys all in our next video. Remember, take care and stay safe out there. See you around.
they really killed off a lot of characters. Some that had so much potential in being side stories and joining their crew. I mean, I honestly thought they'd get to see more Jaegers, uh, meet up with other pilots. You know, I thought the cast would grow tighter together. I mean, when they got their mother back, I thought, damn, that would be a cool addition to the cast. And then that kind of happened, so. quite unfortunate. But like I said, most of the questions have been answered with this series finale. I'm honestly hoping for more Pacific Rim animes and building a bigger Pacific Rim universe, but I think it might be over.